Okay, it says uh, for the circuit shown below, it's asking for the total impedance of the circuit or total impedance of my uh, the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. And the phase angle between the current and applied voltage, I'll need to figure that out again. And the amplitude of the current through the circuit. Um, all right. I, want to do A, C, and then B, because it's going to be easier that way. Um, so for the total impedance, again, the relationship I rely on is that the equivalent impedance, it adds like registers. So I have uh, basically three registers in series. So I have resistance of the first register, the real actual register, and the resistance of the second element, which is inductor, I use the impedance of inductor. So plus I omega L. And for the last element, capacitor, I use the impedance of a capacitor plus one over I omega C. And this can be simplified a little bit. So let me do that. Um, one over I can be written as minus I uh, so since I have uh, I's both here, I can factor that out to get me this uh, simplified expression, R plus factor dot I. And I have the first term, omega L, and the second term, minus one over omega C. Um, this uh, makes it a little bit easier to calculate the, the magnitude. I guess it's not saying magnitude, but I assume it means magnitude of total impedance because uh, when I take the absolute value here, it's nicely separated into this uh, uh, real part here and the imaginary part here. And when I do that calculation, I know the answer is going to be equal to square root of the real part squared, r squared, plus the imaginary part squared. Uh, if you don't believe that, you can plug in the, you can go through the algebra yourself uh, using this expression for the complex number absolute value. It's the complex number times its conjugate square rooted. When you go through that, you'll get that. Um, okay, so that's a total impedance. And once you know the magnitude of the total impedance, then it's uh, um, quite simple to find the amplitude of the current because uh, since I know the amplitude of voltage, amplitude of a current will, so let me label that V naught. Amplitude of current is simply V naught divided by the absolute value of the total impedance. So let me just write it T equivalent. Um, and uh, this is really what I want everyone to be able to get. And in fact, if you, if you got, get this far and you are able to write out the expression for equivalent impedance and maybe simpli simplify this expression pertaining to the angular frequency of the driving um, driving signal. You can actually get uh, at what frequency at the, is this quantity minimized and you can get all the stuff about resonance from that analysis, kind of ignoring phase angle. And to get the phase angle, again, you, um, well, let's, uh, let me see if I can do it in a more straightforward way. So using Ohm's law, it should be the current through the circuit is equal to the voltage divided by the, um, or voltage divided by the impedance or, and these are all, complex quantities. So the current through the circuit should be my V naught. Oh, and this is sine. So and I'll just, it's, whether it's sine or cosine, it doesn't actually matter. So I'm just gonna use e to the i omega t. Um, or, or, you know, I could, yeah, let me just leave that there. Divided by the equivalent resistance, which would be the absolute value of the uh, uh, um, the complex impedance times e to the i phi. And so this portion is what gave me the amplitude of current 
and simplifying this portion gives me e to the i omega t minus v and based on what I saw with the inductor, when V is positive, I think that's when uh, this phase angle is positive. Um, and yeah, it's this language that always eludes me exactly what that means. <laughs> so, um, so my goal here really comes down to figuring out this, uh, uh, the complex phase angle phi for the for the total impedance, which is this quantity here. So, um, so this is I think this is the most convenient form. It has the real part, this part, and it has the imaginary part, and the expression for my phi should be equal to arc tangent of the imaginary part omega L minus one over omega C divided by the real part R or the resistance. And that's it. That should be my answer. Let me, uh, let me plug in the number so that I can plug it into the question and <laughs> make sure I didn't <laughs> make a sign error. Um, let's see here. So I have, yeah, omega doesn't really simplify. So I'm just gonna Type it in. Omega is my uh, 120 pi uh, times inductance, uh, 25 millihenry or 0 0.025 henry. Um, okay, that's my impedance of the inductor minus one divided by omega 120 pi times the capacitance, 400 microfarad. Okay, uh, let me press equal to um, set calculated difference. Um, and the difference is positive, uh, which means the inductor is kind of winning over. Um, at lower frequency, the capacitor should have had a higher impedance. No. Anyways, that divided by the resistance five is um, is the argument in arc tangent. And let me put this through arc tangent and uh, my answer is gonna be radius, okay. Trigonal second arc tangent. So 0 0.509 or so. Let me plug that in to see 0 0.0509, uh, I think that was it. And it should be positive because the inductive uh, reactance one over the the capacitive uh, reactance. So so yeah, that's uh, the RLC circuit analysis using uh, complex impedances. And it's uh, um, again th this is really why I was uh, highly motivated to introduce complex impedance, even though it's not in the standard set of topics for Felix 4B because it. Just make things so much easier. The way your textbook does this analysis, I mean, I think it's instructive for you to uh, look through it. And what I hope you will learn from it is just how much simpler it is when you use complex impedance. So uh, that's why I introduced it.